Today's topic is going to be about bringing someone to therapy with you. Hey, so how are y'all doing today? Happy Sunday. You get comfortable here. The uh, question arise because of several comments, questions, collaboration by colleagues, the idea of opinions of bringing someone to your therapy session. Uh, some places that you go to, they will tell you that you're more than welcome to bring anybody that you want to your therapy session if you think that they will help or they're important to your recovery. Sometimes when you're doing family therapy, then family members will come with you. Uh, sometimes as an individual, if you're you know, a young person, you might you know have a parent come with you. Or sometimes if you are the parent, you know, and it's a situation where you want the therapist to help give you feedback and work through a problem, you might bring one of your kids. Possibility. Um, more often than not, if you are here as family therapy or if your child is here and you're doing therapy with them occasionally coming in, adding information, helping, or doing a mixture of individual and family therapy, the roles get defined very quickly, and hopefully you understand what it is y'all are trying to accomplish and what you're doing. Sometimes that's not so clear when someone's just bringing someone to the therapy session. So today is a little bit of talk about clarity of roles when that happens. Now understand, every therapist is not the same. Some will go by different rules. Some will allow some things. Some won't. Uh, me, I'm a pain. I'm very direct, and I tell you what I do and don't allow. So that being said, if you was to come to me for family therapy, and if you just bring somebody in there, I always warn people, this is not a time to bash each other. This is not a time to bring out gripes and complaints. This is a time to solve problems and work towards a resolution of disagreements or issues or things that you want to work on. That being said, I usually tell the person, and I say usually because sometimes somebody will show up the last minute with an individual and say, can they join me for the session? Normally, though, I tell people, if you're going to bring somebody, let me know what it is you want to talk about before we start the session. In other words, you're still the client. The individual that you bring in, if you have started individual therapy, is not the client, and therefore the rules are a little different. With the client, I have confidentiality already set up. I've already explained to you that whatever you tell me, I won't divulge to anybody else unless you give me, you know, permission, uh, release of information. Uh, you're protected by HIPAA. Unless there are certain things that go outside of that protection, which we always tell people if, you know, you say you're going to kill yourself, hurt somebody else. Uh, abuse and neglect of a minor, and depending on the state, abuse or neglect of an elder. In that context, you can say things that you can be pretty sure that, you know, unless they fall into that caveat, they're not going to be repeated or said. Guests who come into the session do not have that. If they're not my client, then they don't have the same kind of protections. And I explain that when you come in, that this is the client. You are the added person. Now, for some people, I will come in and say, and to let you know, these are mandated reporting things. So clarify the meeting very quickly. The other thing that I do is, is when you come in to see me, if you are not part of a regular ongoing family session, then, then I will, you know, you come in and I'm like, okay, what is the purpose of you being here today? Very blunt. What is it we're trying to achieve? What is it we want to do? What is it we want to get out of this session? That right there sets the stage. I'm asking you to give me a goal. And when I say you, I'm talking about the client and the person they invited. What is the goal of you being here? Is the goal of you being here to have better communications? Great, we can work on that. Is the goal of you being here and, and giving collaborating information to specifically help the client get better by solving a problem? And how is it you have the information and how does the problem involve you? 
again, it's almost always coming back to communications or relationships between the client and that person. Occasionally, there's pertinent information that that maybe the, the client themselves are having a hard time divulging, and they're asking the person to come and tell that. Doable. Many times, what will happen is I will be dragged into what I call couple therapy. See this shaking head? If this is just a podcast and you ain't getting it, I'm shaking my head back and forth going, no, 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 no. I always warn people, do not jump me with a family therapy session that ends up being instead a couples counseling session. Because if I'm talking to you as a couple, that's a whole different kettle of fish. We need to then go back to the drawing board and say, if you're doing couples therapy, then you as a couple go to the therapist and the couple is the client. See how the dynamics have changed. Now, I can help couples sometimes as part of helping a family get along. And in that case, you know, the person comes in and says, well, we're having trouble making a decision. We can't decide on certain things. We're having, you know, relationship problems of one form or fashion, whether it's finance, sex, um, you know, basic agreement on house chores, things like that. Notice how I keep narrowing it down to something that can be accomplished. I will occasionally have individuals come in with the sole purpose of bashing their partner. Let me tell you about them. They did this. They're the most horrible thing in the world. And that could be the client to their partner or the partner that comes in to the client. And I shut that down quick. No, this is not what this session is about. This session is about solving a problem. It was requested that you be here. Either you requested the client, the client agreed, or the client asked me to let them come in because that's what they wanted. But in either case, this is about solving a problem. Coming in for a half hour, 45 minutes or an hour and screaming at the other person, even if it makes you feel good while you're doing it, does not accomplish something. So when you decide to bring somebody in, Figure out what it is you want. As I tell people when I do family therapy, family therapy for me is structure oriented. Who's in charge? Who's got what details, jobs, things to do around the house? Whose responsibility is different things within the house? Discipline, making decisions, things like that. Building a structure. And then the other part of that is goal or solution focused. Solution-focused family therapy is there is a problem, and we're going to find out what we can do to fix that problem. Now, sometimes, as they will tell you in family therapy, what you think is the problem is not the problem. It's the identified problem. Johnny's not going to school on a regular basis. Alice is not making the grades she should be making. Little Fred's not doing his chores around the house. Sometimes those things are actually the identified problem. The real problem may be the structure of the family. It may be confusion in who is boss and who is taking charge. So in that sense, sometimes if you come in with a goal, I will talk to you about, well, maybe this is the way to accomplish that goal. and then. As the family systems shift, things start to happen and we see where we go. Again, though, it's about fixing this problem. It's not about this person never listens. This person never does that, you know, and, and people will say, well, I just I just want to be heard. Great. Get you an individual therapist. Go talk to them. I'm serious. Family therapy is about the family being heard for me. Individuals are important. But when you pull the individual above the whole family and let that person dictate everything in the session and lose control of your session, you don't accomplish what you want to accomplish. That person walks away feeling all beefed up. Got my thing. The other members of the family don't. In fact, things could even get worse or more problematic. So my advice to you is before you come to a therapy session, 
think about, and this is even in regular therapy, what do you want? Why are you coming? And what is the person who's coming with you? What, what are they going to add or take away or do or change that you want to happen in that therapy session that you're going to change your goals or make things happen because of it? Taking a minute to write this down. You should not be shocked if you walk into the therapy session and, you know, you introduce, you know, this is my cousin Bob who shares my house with me. Or this is my my girlfriend or my boyfriend or my husband or my fiance or you know, my wife, my my mom, whatever. You know, these days you have a lot of houses because of finances that get combined and you may have a couple of generations in there, you may have three or four generations in some cases. What is it you want to have happen in the therapy session? Come in with a goal and let's work on that and let's hammer. Let's make it work. Let's fix this problem. Many times people will say, I go to therapy a lot and I'm not, I don't feel like I've changed. I don't think anything has happened. I'm reminded of Alice in Wonderland staring up at the Cheshire cat, asking for directions and him asking her, well, where is it you want to be? Where, you know, where do you want to go? And when she makes the comment along the lines of it doesn't matter, then he says, well, it really doesn't matter which way you go then, which road you take. Sometimes therapy gets, de you know, derailed this way. You don't have a specific goal and you meander. And then you complain about where you end up. Excuse me, if you get in your car and randomly drive and then you don't like the place you showed up at, uh, excuse me, who was driving? Who was steering the car? Clear goals. Clear goals in family therapy. I would assume and I don't do couples, so I'm not going to go into what couple th therapy is about. I do know I get accidentally coupleized <laughs> when I go into some therapy sessions. And it is a family therapy. And in that sense, again, goals. What do you want to happen? You know? And some of the things that are wanted, it, it might be that it is that individual that needs to work on that thing. You know, their patience, their, their timing, their responsibility. Got it. But this isn't a bashing, bashing session. This is about coming in, figuring out what you want and how we can go about getting it, which means that all parties are going to have give and take. One person doesn't get to come in and say the other person's all bad and I'll change them and walk away feeling good about themselves. You know, you're just creating one more problem. You're not fixing a problem. So to wrap it up, think about what you want. Clarify your goals. Please put it down on paper. So when you walk in that door, you don't forget what it is you wanted to accomplish. And then let's stick to that and make it happen. Y'all have a great day and I will talk to you later.